Hello everyone, uh, this is Chan byung Che from Yonsei University. I'm really happy to take this opportunity to meet you through this online lecture. So if you have any questions about my lectures, and you could drop me an email or leave a message on Coursera website. I will try to get back as soon as possible once I read your comments. Okay, let's get started. In the previous lectures, I believe you have learned about the basics of cellular networks, uh, principles of the wireless communications, and wireless radio management. In this module, I want to talk about the multiple antenna technologies. Uh, this is an agent of my lectures. After basics of RF antennas, we have some questions to understand the key concepts. The first question is, how can we achieve higher antenna gain? Ah, by the way, don't worry if you don't know some technical terms right now. If you already know the terms, you could skip my lectures. Uh, second question is, how can we decrease the error probability, especially in the high SNR reason? After that, we will try to have an answer to the question on how can we increase data rates? And we will conclude this lecture by answering the last question, which is good, supporting the single user or multiple users. Before introducing multiple antenna techniques, I first would like to explain what the antenna is. I am pretty much sure that Everyone taking this lecture has a cell phone or a smartphone. If you open the case of the phone, we should be able to see uh, this kind of the board and you will see several antennas inside. Yes, we have already been using antennas. Then, what is the antenna? What's the role of antenna? Are we not able to use a smartphone without a, this antenna? An antenna is an electrical device that converts electric power into radio waves and vice versa. It is usually used with a radio transmitter or radio receiver. In transmission, a radio transmitter supplies electrical current oscillating at RF to the antennas, the terminals. The antenna radiates the energy from the current as electromagnetic wave. In reception, an antenna intercepts some of the power of an electromagnetic wave in order to produce a tiny voltage at its terminals, and that is applied to a receiver to be amplified. Antennas are required by any radio receiver or transmitter to couple its electrical connection to the electromagnetic field. The radio waves are electromagnetic waves that carry signals through the air at the speed of light with almost no uh, transmission loss. The radio transmitters and receivers are used to convey signals Signal is information here in this system, including uh, broadcast radio, television, mobile telephones, Wi-Fi uh, data networks, many remote control devices such as the wireless remote sensors, among many others. Radio waves are also used directly for the measurements in technologies, including radar and GPS. In each and every case, the transmitters and the receivers involved require antennas. Although they, these are sometimes hidden, such as the antenna inside the laptop computer equipped with Wi-Fi. In sum, the antenna is a band pass filter and it plays like our mouse and ears. Antenna can be classified in various ways. Monofold. 
The most common form is the quarter wave monopole, which is one quarter of a wavelength long and has a gain of about 5.12 dBi when mounted over a ground plane. Monopoles have an omnidirectional radiation pattern, so they are used for broad coverage of an area. Dipole, the most common type, the half-wave dipole consists of two resonant elements just under a quarter wavelength long. This antenna radiates maximally in all directions, perpendicular to the antenna's axis, giving a small directive gain of 2.15 dBr, practically the lowest uh, directive gain of any antenna. Although half-wave dipoles are used alone as omnidirectional antennas, they are also a building block of many other more complicated uh, directional antennas. Microstrip, as an example of dipole antennas, uh, this consists of metal sheets over, uh, mounted over a ground plane, which is similar to dipole with gain of 6 to 9 dBr. Their ease, easy fabrication using PCB techniques have made them popular in modern wireless devices, often used in arrays. Indeed, we use this kind of antennas for a smartphone. To achieve higher directivity gain, of course, I will explain later about this one. Uh, there are specialized antennas like feed horn and cassette ray. Okay, then let's more focus on antennas for small devices like smartphones. As I explained, the patch type antennas are widely used, but even about 10 to 15 years ago, most cell phones had this kind of whip antennas. For small cell repeaters and base stations, chip antenna has also been used. So far, we have learned how the antenna looks like. And here, I want to introduce a parameter that describes the electrical behavior of an antenna. S parameter is basically the return loss. Since we want to transmit a certain energy through the antenna, and we don't want to get any feedback signal from the antenna. Return loss is the loss of power in the signal return or reflected by discontinuity in a transmission line. This can be a mismatch with the terminal, uh, terminating load or with the device inserted in the line. The return loss is a measure of how well the antennas are matched. A match is good if the return loss is high. The high return loss is desired. Return loss with positive sign is identical to the magnitude of the reflection coefficients when expressed in decibels but of opposite sign. That is, return loss with negative sign is more properly called reflection coefficient. The S parameter S11 from two port network theory is frequently also called return loss, but is actually equal to the uh, reflection coefficient. Obviously, the smaller S11 and S21, eh, the better performances. Then, let's have some S11 curves. Here, we plot the S11 versus frequency, and the green block is desired for communications since it has relatively low return loss. And depending on the design requirements, we could have different curves. The lower uh, S11 values like pink curve, the bandwidth becomes narrower. So, 
if your system should support wideband, then you might want to have specially designed additional filter to guarantee the sufficiently low S11 values. Another important parameter we need to consider in this lecture is radiation pattern. The term radiation pattern refers to the directional angular dependence of the strength of the rate, uh, radio waves. Since electromagnetic radiation is dipole radiation, it is not possible to build an antenna that radiates coherently equally in all directions. Although such a hypothetical isotropic antenna is used, as a reference to calculate the antenna gain. To plot the radiation pattern, you might want to download PCAT, which is a freeware. For the point source example, if we cut the sphere, we always have a circle for electric field and magnetic field. However, the simplest antennas monopole and dipole antennas consist of one or two straight metal rods along a common axis. These symmetric antennas have uh, radiation patterns with a similar uh, symmetry called the omnidirectional patterns. They radiate equal power in all directions perpendicular to the antenna with the power varying only with the angle to the axis. Dropping off the zero and the antenna's axis, this illustrates the general principle that if the shape of an antenna is symmetrical, and its radiation pattern will have the same symmetry. An antenna's power gain, or simply gain, is a key performance number that combines the antenna's directivity and also uh, and electrical efficiency. As a transmitting antenna, the gain describes how well the antenna converts input power into radio waves headed in a specified directions. As a receiving antenna, the gain describes how well the antenna converts radio waves arriving from a specified direction into electrical power. When no direction is specified, the gain is understood to refer to the peak value of the gain. A plot of the gain as a function of direction is called the radiation pattern. Antenna gain is usually defined as the ratio of power produced by the antenna from far field source on the antenna's beam axis, here a B, to the power produced by a hypothetical loosely isotropic antenna, which is equally sensitive to signal from all directions, here it's A. Usually, this ratio is expressed in decibels, and these units are referred to as decibel isotropy, DBR. An alternative definition compares the antenna to the power received by a uh, loosely half-wave dipole antenna, in which case the units are written as dBd. To get the antenna gain, the same energy is assumed for the cases of with directivity and without directivity. Note that uh, directive gain where directivity is a different measure that does not take an antenna's electrical efficiency into account. This term is sometimes more relevant in the case of a receiving antenna where one is concerned mainly with the ability of an antenna to receive the signals from the one direction while rejecting interfering signals from uh, coming from a different one direction. Indeed, there is a trade-off between the antenna gain and the beam width. 
the higher the antenna gain, the narrower the bandwidth. Thus, therefore, to cover really long range, you should have a pencil beam, but if you slightly mismatch the direction, you're going to lose huge link gain. Uh, this is a simple example. Suppose the TX transmits uh, 30 dBm power and the path loss between the transmitter and receiver is 55 dB. Then, without the antenna gain, the RX would receive minus 25 dBm. However, with 5 dBr and 10 dBr additional gain, we simply have minus 20 dBm and minus 15 dBm received power. Uh, this is a simple link budget analysis. Uh, let's take a look at uh, evolution of antennas. The first antenna were built in 888, 1888 by German physicist Heinrich Hertz. He placed dipole antennas at the focal point of parabolic reflectors for both transmitting and receiving. In 1926, approximately 40 years later from the first antenna, Uda and Yagi invented a directional antenna consisting of multiple parallel elements in a line. This kind of design achieved a very substantial increase in the antenna's directivity. Later, patch antenna, also known as microscript antenna, was proposed. Uh, this is a narrow band and wide beam antenna. By using the several antenna elements, phased array were demonstrated in 1957 by Hughes Aircraft Company. They showed simultaneous electrical scanning in both azimuth and elevation. Smart signal processing algorithms were used to identify the spatial signal signature, such as the direction of arrival of the signal for a smart antenna system. In 2000, PIFA has been widely used in mobile wireless devices for its space saving properties. As you can see from this slide, there has been very active research progress in the last 100 years, mostly to achieve higher gain, wider bandwidth, better pattern, higher efficiency, lower cost, and smaller size. Then, let's take a different perspective evolution of antennas for link enhancement. In early 1900s, we used non-adaptive static beam shaping. Phase difference couplers together with fixed phase delays and antenna arrays were used in beam forming networks, such as Butler matrix, to create a radio beam in any prescribed direction. To increase the link reliability, the receive diversity techniques were proposed and more sophisticated signal processing in spatial and temporal domains were developed. In 1990s, the term MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, was first used for several purposes for single user scenarios and it was evolved into multi-user scenarios. Then, what is multiple antenna technique? What will we learn in this lecture? Let's have the uh, one more two example. It might be quite ridiculous to imagine, but suppose we have one more mouse and one more uh, set of ears. If you are supposed to read a collection of fairy tales you shared to one. You could say more, or you could have clear message. 
This is the same for telecommunications. The antenna is like our mouth and ears. The more the, the, more the antennas, the higher the transmission rate or the better the link reliability. From now on, throughout this lecture, I will introduce some representative techniques to achieve these goals. In the first part, we have learned the basics of passive antenna device, antenna types as parameter, antenna gain, and so on. In the next part, we will cover a way of increasing antenna gain through multiple antennas.